I hope you're doing good this morning. Um, uh, Justin asked me to speak for this week, and um, I just have a couple of things that are on my heart that I hope to share uh, that I hope will be a blessing to you. Um, on the screen, if you can see it, for those of you that can see it, uh, those are the words to a song that we'll be singing later for worship uh, called Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount. Uh, and these words really resounded and stood out to me. Uh, they are prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Um, and that got me thinking of what it's like to wander from the Lord and um, the consequences of that and where we see that in the Bible. So if you could all just jump in with me. Uh, we're going to jump in first to Genesis 4. Verses 10 to 14. And I'll be reading that. Um, the Lord said, and this is the Lord talking to Cain after Cain has just killed Abel. The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse, driven from the ground, which has opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you, and you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And then Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today, you are driving me from the land. I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. You can jump to the next slide. The, um, the section here that stood out to me is the consequence of wandering. For Cain, it's not necessarily that he would be killed um, or that he would become a wanderer. The, the ultimate consequence is that he is hidden from the presence of God, right? So as we wander, we see with Cain, he is hidden from his presence. Um, let's jump into the next one. If you could jump to Numbers 32, 10 to 13. And with this story, I'm going to give a little context. We have uh, the Reubenites and the Gadites. They are about to enter into the promised land, but they like the land in front of the Jordan before the promised land, and they want to stay there. Uh, and so this is Moses giving his little warning to these uh, two groups of people. And he is hearkening back to the time when Caleb and Joshua and the 12 spies went into the land and... Uh, Moses is re retelling this story to the Reubenites and the Gadites. Um, and I think this is a very interesting understanding of what can happen or what can cause us to um, be wandering from Christ or wandering from God. So as, uh, as I read, the Lord's anger was aroused that day, and he swore an oath saying, because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of those, uh, one of the one of those who are twenty years or old, uh, or more, when they came out of Egypt, will see the land that I have promised as an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not one except Caleb, son of uh, Jephunneh, Jephunneh, the Kenite, and Joshua, son of Nun. Uh, for they have followed the Lord wholeheartedly. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and He made them wander in the wilderness for forty years until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight was gone. Jump into the next slide, please. Um, the consequence here for Israel was that they had not followed the Lord wholeheartedly. As a result of not following the Lord wholeheartedly, we see them forced into wandering the wilderness. Earlier, we had seen the consequence of that as being hidden from the presence of God, but now we see the, the, the cause of the wandering is not following him wholeheartedly. But we have some other causes also. Um, if you could jump to the next slide. And if you guys could all jump with me to Jeremiah 50, verse 6. And in here, Jeremiah is talking, he says, My people have, a, uh, have, have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and caused them to roam the mountains. They wandered over, the mount, over mountain and hill and forgot their own resting place. And here we see the reason that the people of God are wandering is because they forgot where to find their rest. And jump into that last slide, 
or not the last slide, but the last verse we have. Okay, and jump into Proverbs 17, 24. And in this situation, we just have a simple proverb about wisdom. But in here, I think um, we see the, the wandering line again. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. And uh, as, we, as we looked at these four um, verses, could you guys jump into that next slide for me? We have four things that stood out. Um, in order to not wander, we have to keep wisdom in view. We have to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. We cannot forget he is our resting place. And number four, the consequence of not doing the first three will be that we will be hidden from his presence. And I think the, the place where we see that uh, most evidently is, uh, go ahead and jump to that next slide, is in Genesis 3. Right, this is a story that we, all, all, we are all completely aware of. This is the fall of, fall of man. Um, and in this story, we see all four of these things um, happening um, to Adam and to Eve. And so if you guys could jump into that next slide for me. In this situation, Genesis 3, verse 1, now we see the serpent was more crafty than all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And he said to woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And here we're seeing Adam and Eve have forgotten their resting place. Instead of being in communion with the Lord and being in communion with God, they are now in communion with the serpent. They are now finding rest and communion with him. And ultimately, that will lead to our next slide, Genesis 3, 2 to 5, where the woman and the, and the serpent have a conversation about the fruit. Um, and jump into that next slide for me. Uh, Genesis 3, 6 to 7 is where we want to stop for a little bit, because I think this ties right into our Proverbs um, that we looked at. Um, Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw the fruit was good for food, and pleasing to the eye. Remember Proverbs, we're talking about um, a discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the end of the earth. So now we have Eve seeing the fruit of the tree was good and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. So Eve here is seeking wisdom, but not in the way that the Lord had intended. And so she took it and ate it and she gave it to her husband's husband and both of their eyes were opened but jump in the next slide here we see they are not following the lord wholeheartedly and they are not keeping wisdom in view um and the worship team go ahead and jump on up here and then well one more slide yeah, and then ultimately we see the consequence of them starting their wandering which is the fact that they will be hidden, and uh, we see Adam, uh, Adam uh, and Eve now starting to hide. Then man uh, and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord uh, among the trees of the garden. For the Lord God called to man, where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So again, we see the fact that Adam and Eve did not... Um, did not rest in the Lord. Instead, they were resting with the serpent. They were not following the Lord wholeheartedly. Instead, they did exactly what the Lord had told them not to do. And instead of seeking wisdom in the Lord, they were seeking wisdom in the fruit. And as a result of that, we see them hidden from his presence. Um, jump into that next slide, please. Ultimately, what, um, what we have, though, is our hope is Matthew 18, 12 to 14. Um, this is just one of the examples that we see of, of what the Lord does to us that wander. Um, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave 99 on the hills and go for the one that has wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, the Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. One of the, jump into that last slide. Um, I'm going to kind of finish off with a couple of lines from the song Come Thou Fount. 
um, that kind of surmi- uh, kind of captures what, what the Lord is doing in Matthew 18. And the lyrics here are, Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood.